Matthew chapter number two. Give me just a little bit more by Should be good, thank you. Amen. Matthew chapter number two. Just want to make mention as well that the new Christmas card lists are out in the mailboxes. Um, if we would have forgot anybody by chance, we would never want to overlook anybody. But, you know, things happen. Um, sometimes you rack your mind and the obvious should be there and it's not. If we forgot someone, let us know. If you didn't have a mailbox, you should have one now. So just look out there. It um, should be added. So appreciate my wife doing all that. I really didn't. Besides, just try to be an extra set of eyes. Uh, she did all that. So thank you to her. And so um, some of you folks are so good. You're already on top of your Christmas cards. We're going to give you ours to fill out next. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just hold your finger there for a moment. I just want to talk to you for a minute. You know, we're already seeing, and I love this time of year, don't you? Uh, down below our house, our neighbors have a countdown on, and uh, I drove by last night. We're down to 23 days, but it's 22 today. I uh, took Christmas, and uh, I love the excitement of it. I love the excitement of how kids are with it. I love the innocence of it. Um, uh, uh, I, uh, I, 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 um, I don't want anyone to lose out with me. But, you know, uh, we've never talked about Santa Claus in our home. And, you know, everybody's the same. We're just kind of honest. This is about Jesus. And this is where you're present. But, you know, your children are influenced by a lot of influences. Once they get out, places and things that they may see and, and other people. And so I didn't get in the middle of the conversation the other night. But I won't dis 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 uh, uh, disclose who is who. But one of them said, Santa is coming. And the other one said, Santa Claus is not real. Yes, he is. He's real. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. And so uh, I, in that moment, and, I'm, and once again, I'm not a Santa Claus fan or promoter. I don't. I, I believe in, in honestly to our children at every age, and we want to tell them the truth about Jesus. But in their innocence of hearing that, I just chuckled and thought, isn't childhood a wonderful thing to be so innocent and to enjoy the beauty of Christmas? Because it is beautiful, isn't it? And so uh, 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 it's just amazing to me. I think that we all need to grab hold of that. No matter where we are, grab hold of the beauty and the innocence and everything of Christmas. And so here we are on this first Sunday of December, and I want us to just embrace Christmas and what it is and what it means. I'm going to be addressing some things uh, that I'm not going to address anymore this month. And because I believe it's a season of great joy and tidings of peace. But I will t deal with a little bit of the things that I want you to hear this morning. And uh, uh, how many of you have already noticed that there's some nativities up? And maybe you've already put one up in your house. The nativity. And I love that because it draws us in to what is that first Christmas uh, as God uh, gave the gift of His only begotten Son. And, and uh, it's just priceless. Uh, you know, some of you may uh, have your parents or maybe you see your parents. That nativity set that's there and uh, uh, that's older and it's just priceless to you. As, as you look at it and you see the shepherds there, you see the angels that are there. You see the wise men. You see Mary and Joseph. And of course, you see the Christ child that is there in that nativity. But something that really most often is missing from that nativity is the, 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 the town of Bethlehem that is going on behind the scenes. We see the stable that's in Bethlehem. We see all the individuals that were involved in that first Christmas as it, it transpires as, as, as the birth of Christ happens. But we don't see the world that is there, the broken columns of Rome that is happening, all because of this night. Can I say that again? The broken columns of Rome that is happening because of this night. Rome is changing. Things are all changing round about because the old world is not the same. This message of Christ's entrance into the world is amazing because it's really the death of the old world, but the entrance of a new world. And when we look at that, we see that His coming changed everything. The birth of a baby changed everything. Amen. And so I want us 
to look at the scripture. It says, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and we're jumping in on the portion where uh, it is concentrating on the king who wanted to hold on to his power. Here this baby is born, but there's a king that's, that, that, that doesn't want to let go of his power, and he's fearful. We know him. We know King Herod, don't we? So this is where we're reading about. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men, from the east to Jerusalem, saying, we, uh, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. When, uh, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Things are about to change. The Roman Empire is about to change. Caesar thinks is about to change. Uh, it's not the same as it used to be. A birth of a baby, God's entrance, changes what was and creates what is. Hey, Amen. I love that. One songwriter wrote this. He said, and you'll know him, he's the songwriter Graham Kendrick. He wrote Shine, Jesus Shine. He writes and he says this, Now a door standing open before you, casting its light into the darkness around. Stop for a moment, step inside. Tonight could be your Bethlehem. And nothing will ever be the same again. This night could change everything. Nothing will ever be the same again since the night he came. That's what we're talking about since the night he came. I want you to think about this this morning in these realms. This could be your Bethlehem. Let this be like the night he came. Everything changes. Although we look at the Christmas story and I'd love to think that I'm, I'm, I, I would be the one that would be chosen to be the father of the Messiah, Joseph. Wouldn't that be nice? Ladies, you may think about if you could be the Mary. Or what about the shepherds who get to come and the first people who by the angel's uh, 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 proclamation they go and they find the baby Jesus and they're the first to worship. Or what if you're the wise men and you have this wealth and you have this knowledge and you see the stars and you notice because you study the stars there's a new star shining tonight. Let's go find the baby and worship. But I'm afraid all too often we're none of those characters but we're much like Herod. Wow. We would hate to admit that, but we're much like Herod. We want to hold on to it. We don't want it to change. We want power. We want it our way. But since the night he came, there's a different message. You know, it's amazing. There was a little girl, and I've told this story before, but there's a little girl. Her name was Rachel. And, uh, Rachel had a problem like Sister Holly and I have. And uh, it's a big problem. Her mom and dad had a problem because every night Rachel got up and came to bed with her parents. Any parents ever had that problem? Yeah. <laughs> Kids coming to bed. And so they decided they were going to solve that problem. And so uh, Rachel's dad went in to tuck her into bed before she went to bed that night. And she had bunk beds. She slept on the bottom. No one occupied the top. And so uh, her dad to her said to her, Rachel, uh, we really want you to stay in your bed tonight. So how about you stay in your bed? And uh, I'll tell you what, daddy will be back in a little bit later. And I'll sleep in the top bunk. She said, oh, good daddy. The only reason why I come over to your bed is, because I get afraid at night and I want you. Daddy said, well, I think we can solve it, Rachel. I'm going to come to you. It'll be all right. So he tucked her in. She fell asleep immediately. Dad went and did his thing and uh, they needed to get done. And a couple of hours later, he came and he looked at Rachel. She was fast asleep and he crawled on the top bunk and he went to sleep. And the next thing they knew, it was morning. They were waking up and Rachel's dad said, Rachel, good job. You stayed in bed all night long. What made the difference? She said, Daddy, I knew you told me that you were coming, so everything will be all right. But Rachel, you were asleep when I came in. How did you know? Because you said it, and I believe it. Do you know what Christmas is all about? Is because God said that he would come and he would be with us. 
so we can go to sleep in peace, so we can rest with the knowledge of His promise that He is with us. That is the message of Christmas, that no matter who we are or where we're at, that the promise of God is that He is Emmanuel, God with us, and we can have the certainty when we don't see Him, when we don't feel Him, when we don't hear Him, we can have the knowledge of resting in safety, of knowing that He is with us, because He promised that. That is Christmas. And so when we look at this, He promised that He would come. Look at Bethlehem, it's crumbled. Look at the Roman Empire, uh, the oppression that is on it. Uh, but softly, we see everything happening round about. Because the promise is God said that He would come. His birth heralded by angels. His birth marked by wise men that would come. He promised that He would be there. He kept His promise. He came into our world. Now I want you to forgive me. I know that I'm going to speak of the obvious this morning. But there are some obvious things that we need to reflect on this morning as we enter the Christmas season. And that is, since He came, He still comes at night. I don't know how you look at the Christmas story, but everything I see is breaking is at night. <laughs> the angels, they break the night sky with the shepherds. The star had to be seen in the night sky. I mean, I see that He breaks the night. It's different. Wise men are following Him. They follow the star because they see the star at night. He still breaks the night. Got a true story, Donald Miller, in his book, uh, Blue Like Jazz. He shares the story of how that there were some men that, and women that were held captive, and the Navy SEALs went in to come to rescue them. But when the Navy SEALs got there, they found that these were being held hostage, Brother Josh, for a very long time, that they weren't open to the Navy SEALs. They didn't trust. They didn't really know that they were Navy SEALs. And so when the Navy SEALs were trying to coerce and, and convince them that they could come to safety, they they got in the corner and they laid down on the floor because they were afraid. And all of a sudden, one of the Navy SEALs, he stripped his helmet and all of his gear off and he got in the floor and he laid with those that were kept hostage. And he said to them, he said, you can trust me. I am a Navy SEAL. You can trust all these guys that are with me. They are Navy SEALs as well. And as he was on the floor and he was huddled with them and he was relating to them, all of a sudden he said, now I need need you to stand up and I need to, you to follow me and go to safety. And one after another, they got up and they followed the Navy SEAL to safety. Do you know what Christmas is? Christmas is that God comes in the middle of our night and He huddles with us. Amen. When we're unsure and we're uncertain, God gets right down to our level and He wraps His arm around us and He reassures us, it's okay. I've come to deliver you. I've come to be with you. I can relate to you. I am God robed in flesh. Come to meet your needs. Amen. God still comes at night. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that Christmas is this. That whether you're seeing through those, in part of my lingo, the magical eyes of a child, or whether the brutal reality of life has war upon you, it doesn't matter. God still comes to meet. He huddles with us. He puts His arms round about us. I'm not super big into a lot of paintings of, uh, of, of Christ, but I love the one. I believe his name is William uh, Blackshear. He painted, and you may have seen the guy who is just laying kind of limp and exhausted, and he has a mouth in his hand because he's crucifying Christ, but Christ is holding him from behind. Christ relates to us. Everything that we're going through we may feel like our situation is unique, and they are because we are each unique. And we may feel like someone may not always understand all the intricate things about our life, but Christ does. And the Christmas is this, is that Christ comes to us to love us and to lead us out. The night He came, things will never be the same. Some of you can probably relate. Things in your life that life will never be the same again. The birth of a child, the loss of a job or the gain of a job. 
the loss of a loved one, the unexpected you did not want, or the unexpected that you waited, uh, that, 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 that appeared and you grabbed a hold of it, one night can change everything. But I believe this, that the greatest night that can change everything is Christ. He changes everything. He loves. Amen. He holds us while we're hurting. He walks for us. He reaches for us to walk with Him. Amen. When we feel like we're astray in the darkness, Christ comes to us. You, you, you've got to understand, He's at home in darkness. Here He is. That night that He was born was dark, maybe physically, but most of all, it was spiritually and governmentally dark. There was oppression. Uh, there, there, there was a wanting of deliverance. It was dark, and Christ came in the middle of that darkness, and, 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 and He is the darkness, but He moved the darkness into light, and that's what He's still doing. He's bringing light in the darkness, the night that he came. Nothing will ever be the same. I want to visit this for just a moment. And I shared this at Blacklight. Christmas sometimes, we can all visit moments that can be a blue Christmas for us. All of us. We look at maybe what was the innocence that is stripped or gone. We may look at better times or healthier times. We may look at times where we had more and now we have less. We may look at times where we had somebody, but they're no longer with us. So all of us visits those moments. And, and, and you know, I could say to you, well, just get over it. We don't really ever get over some things. We learn to cope with. We learn to deal with. But we never truly get over it. I'm not going to lie to you. And in our society, we're told, just get over it. And so sometimes we don't really know how to grieve. We don't really know how to respond. And it can be the loss of many things. It may be a person. It may be a job. It, may, it can be many, many things. And so we visit that. C.S. Lewis said this. He didn't realize how much grief looked and felt like fear. Sometimes we can be fearful. That anticipation of what may be can make us fearful and it can grip our heart and it can be so real when it's not even uh, uh, brought to fruition yet. But fear isn't the whole message of Christmas. Fear not. Joseph, fear not. Mary, fear not. Shepherds, fear not. Fear not, fear not, fear not. The message of Christmas is fear not because He still comes into the night and He meets us where we are and He brings the light. Aren't you glad for light this morning? Amen. I'm thankful for, for, for when I flip the switch that the light's on. I'm thankful for, for, for light on many, many different levels. But most of all, I'm thankful for spiritual light that God walks in and He changes things. He gives light. And so the night that He arrives, amen, since the the night he comes, he still changes everything. Now let me focus on this. Not only does he walk into our night and changes, but he changes the status quo. When I talk, uh, speak about that, um, uh, let me uh, just share. There was uh, one of three little boys in the home, and he was speaking about his brothers. And uh, he wrote a letter to Santa, and he said, Dear Santa, there are three boys who live in our home. Jeffrey is two, and he's good some of the time. David is four, and he's good some of the time. Norman, he is seven, and he is good all the time. And I'm Norman. <laughs> you see, sometimes we can self-esteem ourselves a little higher than what we should, or, or, or we don't really suffer from low self-esteem but we rather have a higher opinion of ourselves, and we're fairly optimistic when it comes to our own sense of worth. And, and so here it is that the same was happening in, in, in the same time that Jesus was born. Here is Caesar, and he is really feeling his worth. And here is Herod, and he is really feeling his worth. I mean, they are the staunch leaders of the day, and they are in control. And when Herod hears the news that a king is born in, 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 in Bethlehem, no, there's a competitor. 
I've got to kill them. We're going to kill all the little boys. We're going to eradicate any type of competition. You see, things will never be the same. It's the same thing in our lives. When Christ comes, we have to rise above the status quo. We can't make excuses for our sin. We can't make excuses for our own ways. But when Christ comes, the status quo has got to go. Do you hear me this morning? We can have very high opinions of ourselves. We can have ideas about a lot of things. But when Christ comes, the status quo has got to go. It isn't the essence of letting sin reign in our life because the King of Kings has come. Sin has got to go. It isn't living to please self and calling the shots. It isn't us making the rules. But saying, wait a second. A child was born, a Messiah, a son is given. Things are going to change. May I ask how much has the babe of Christmas changed your life? Do you still live for you? Do you still live for the sinful pleasures that you want? Do you still make the rules? Or do you say no when that baby came? And he changed everything. Because he grew up to be the sinless, spotless Son of God who died upon the Christ cross of Calvary. And I've yielded myself to the babe of Christmas because he's the God of my life. What did Jesus say when they tried to make excuses? No, let the dead bury the dead. He said, I don't want your excuses, I want your surrender. And that changed everything. That no longer do we live for ourselves, but we live for Christ. Sometimes folks don't like to hear our opinions of what things are because they're not our opinions. They should be the Word of God. Well, that may be what you think. No, it's not what I think. This is what the Word of God says. Read it for yourself. You see, because Christ came into the world to change the world. He loves so much that He came to give. The status quo was overturned. I need to tell you that the Christ of Christmas does not bargain. He does not negotiate. He doesn't require any type of substitution. He just requires complete submission. The night He came is the night I had to go. Herod, a baby changes everything. The status quo has got to go. The great thing about this is not only does he come into the dark, not only does he change the status quo, but he can still be found. You may say, well, the manger in Bethlehem is empty. It's just a, a story. See, sometimes we miss the greatest of gifts. Let me tell you another story. There was a little girl and she was wrapping up a box one day. She was wrapping it up and she took all the most beautiful wrapping paper her parents had and tents put around the box. And her daddy said, you've wasted all that. Why did you waste that? He got up Christmas morning to find out. The gift was for him. Felt a bit embarrassed and so he unwrapped the tinsel and the beautiful wrapping paper and he opened the box to find out the box was empty. Or at least what he thought was empty. He said, why did you give me an empty box? You took the tinsel, you took the best wrapping paper, and you give me an empty box. His daughter looked at him and said, no, Daddy. That box is full of kisses for you. Sometimes we look at the Christ of Bethlehem, and we look at that baby, and to us, it's like a box like that, Dad. 
the most beautiful, and we look and it seems empty, but we've got to get past the babe of Bethlehem and understand that he wasn't a baby all of his life, and he doesn't remain a baby, but he grew up to be the Son of God. Every word and every promise that he had given, he fulfilled, and he not only lived the life as a sinless, a spotless Son of God, but he died the Lamb of God, the Son of God, and now he sits on the right hand of God. The things of God are not empty this morning, but they are full if we will embrace them. Amen. Just a word for you. Don't look for a big present, but look for the Son of God. <coughs> you see, how our hearts respond to the gift of God is up to us. If we allow them to be hard like Pharaoh, they'll remain hard. But if we allow them to be filled with the enemy's lies, they'll remain filled with the enemy's lies. But if we give our heart to God to be soft and renewed this Christmas, it will be renewed. Strive to come again this morning. One night changed everything. One night changed everything. I want to ask you this Christmas is a night over 2,000 years ago has that night changed your life? Has it changed your response to Christmas and how you view it? We're entering one of the greatest seasons of the year. Of course, the Easter story means more to us but I love Christmas. I love God's gift. I love everything that the season holds. And if this Christmas, if you're stuck somewhere, not feeling whole, I want to tell you that you've missed the greatest thing of Christmas. Because there's hope. There's hope. And you may say, Mother Seville, I wish I could go back to being a child and all the mystery and the magicalness of it. What has life given you that keeps you from the joy and the peace and the hope of Christmas? Mary and Joseph, they didn't just find fear and anxiety that we see, but they found the message of fear not. And they found the promise and the hope of God at Christmas. We look at the shepherds and the mundane, and even the way that they were looked down on society. Their job was not popular, or not something someone wanted to grow up to be necessary. But in the middle of the night, the message broke through. Fear not, for there is peace on earth. There is goodwill toward men. At Christmas, they found peace and goodwill toward men. The wise men, they traveled, but they found exceeding great joy. I don't know where I'm at, and what I feel this morning is this, is that for us as Miracle Revival Church, because since the night He came, I want us to experience the promise and the peace. The good news, the goodwill, and the great joy. Since that night, all doors have been open for us to experience that. Sister Holly, if you play, the altars are kind of congested, so I'm going to ask you just to stand where you are this morning. And as you stand, if you're able, I want everyone just to close their eyes. Can I ask you, where are you this Christmas? Where are you? Are you just tired and worn out? Are you frustrated? Do you feel like the night is dark? Do you feel like you're all alone? 
going through that. He says, the night that he come, he's still walking in the dark rooms and huddling with people that he loves. And he's whispering the words, follow me. Let me lead you to light. If you wrestle with finding joy and peace, the Savior is here with deliverance in His hands to give you exceeding great joy and peace down deep in your heart. The Christ of Christmas. So early in the season, would you allow Him to walk in? And would you allow the testimony of this month to be since the night He came? Since that night, I am no longer the same. the Spirit of God to walk into your heart and your mind and your soul right now and to give you the answers for the things that you need. Amen. We we'll just surrender every area. We we'll just say, God, it's not about being the status quo or having it my way. But God, I'm yielded to you. I'm yours this morning. If that's yours all around the sanctuary with no one looking around, would you lift up your hands? And lift up your voice and say, God, I surrender all. Since the night that you came, my life will never be the same. I surrender it all to you. I will no longer live by my own rules or under the influence of sin. I will no longer live in darkness, but I want your light to shine. Hallelujah. Since the night you came, God, I am this Christmas going to experience that joy and that exceeding great uh, joy and peace, God, that comes from you. I'm grabbing hold of the promises that you are and because you are, I am. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Savior. Hallelujah, Jesus.